The next two lessons are going to focus on once we've uh, gathered the data and once we've organized it. Of course, you can always analyze it to calculate mean, median, mode, and uh, your ranges and your quartiles. Um, but sometimes it's even more important just to display it. To display it in a way that catches the eye and is easy to interpret. We're going to take a look at two very similar um, methods for doing this uh, today. Bar graphs and histograms. And after break, uh, we're going to look at line graphs and scatter plots. So, um, first of all, you all know what a bar graph is. A bar graph is basically the, is the best graph to use if you've got a bunch of different categories. And you want to show uh, how often a response is given. Um, so, for instance, if you look at the, the, uh, the setup here, this is the number of hours of television watched by people in a sixth grade class. So, um, I've got a bunch of ones, a two, a three, a zero, a three. It's not very organized. Um, what I need to do first, even before I, I put this on a graph, um, and you need to do this every time you do a bar graph or histogram, even if the directions don't say it, we're going to make a frequency table. Remember, frequency is how often something happens. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, here on this side, I'm going to call this uh, R for response and F for frequency. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the, the workbooks for the, for the uh, probability, they had uh, a tally mark place. You don't have to do that. I'm just going to do what the responses were uh, and what the frequency was. So here my responses, I had some people say zero, some say one, two, three, and five. Nobody said four, so I don't have to put that in here. Um, now I just go back to my list and say, okay, how many people said they watched zero hours of television? One, two. Okay, how many people said they watched one hour? Three. I had one person say they watched two hours. Three people say they watched three hours. And one person said they watch five hours a night. Um, so now what we're going to do, now that we have that data organized, there's that word again, we noticed we used a table, um, I'm going to put this on this axis over here. Um, when you uh, do a bar graph, always, always, always put the frequency on the y-axis. Reason for that is that the height of the bars is always how many times that response was given. Okay, so you might not call it frequency. Uh, you could call it number of responses, whatever. But whatever's in this column right here, you're going to put on the, the y-axis. So that would leave the um, for the x-axis number of hours. Now, normally we would have this part correspond to zero, this y-axis here. But remember, zero is its own response. Just like if I asked, like, what's your favorite color, you wouldn't put, like, blue on this line right here or green on this line right here. You'd step it over. What we're going to do, we're going to evenly space our hash marks here. You want to be using a ruler for this. Um, and for every response, it's going to get its own hash mark. So I'll put zero right here, space it out right here, and put one. Two, three, five. We kind of use as much of that space as you can. Zero, one, two, three, five. All right, then up the side. Now, here with frequency, down here would correspond to zero because it's the number of responses. So we'll let the x axis be zero. And notice I've got to get up to three. So I'm going to think okay, divide this into three uh, somewhat equal regions here. So there's one, two, and three, okay? And now I'm ready to draw my bars, okay? Uh, in a bar graph, you wanna make sure your bars do not touch. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and you wanna make sure they're the same width. Uh, if they're different widths, it might make it look like more people said that, that option. So you wanna be careful you're keeping the same width here. So for zero, I'm gonna go up to two. So I'm going to draw just my straight lines on either side of zero, okay, and then I'll cap it, there we go, all right, on either side of one, I've got to go up to three, 
we just kind of make the same distance. Okay, just try and make it as neat as you can. Remember, this is a picture for people to look at. You want it to draw the eye. Uh, you want it to look good to them so that they understand the data very easily. If you just slop something down on paper, it's not going to uh, be something that people want to look at. And so we want to try and keep our bars even. There we go. Uh, three. I'm getting a little off, aren't I? Uh, three's going up to three. So same height as this one. A little bit off on the width there. It's okay. Nobody's a Picasso. Just get as close as you can. And then five's going up to one. And now that I've got my bars, I'm just going to do one more thing that'll kind of make these stand out. I'm going to take my, my pencil here and just for, for each bar, I'm not going to shade them in all the way, but I'm just going to go back the other way with each with every other one just to kind of show how they are different from each other. Um, so I'm not spending a lot of time shading. If you want to spend time doing polka dots and hearts and little ponies, that's fine. But uh, I just do these stripes. All right, so that's a bar graph. A uh, histogram, essentially, is a bar graph that touches. Now, if you look at this one here, the reason you histograms are useful is because they use what we call uh, intervals. If you look at your responses here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different responses. Nine different responses is going to make it very difficult for me to, to I don't want to make nine different bars. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, okay, if this is, these are 12 children, um, and we survey them how much money they get from the tooth fairy, I want to know what range did they answer in, okay? so. Uh, we could do 50 cents, but then that would mean that I've got, here's one, two, probably still like five bars, um, which is okay, but there's probably one better. Probably uh, what you want to do is a dollar range. Um, now, one word on this, be careful. Um, so rather than putting R for responses, I'm going to put I for your intervals and uh, frequency yet again. And as, as always, frequency is going to go on the y-axis. Okay. Now, if I want to go intervals of $1, I can't go 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. Because if I do, where do I put $1? Do I put it with this interval or this interval? It doesn't, that, that's a problem. So I can't go 0 to 1 or 1 to 2. What I need to do is I need to think, okay, how many pennies, or what would I get up to if I needed 100 pennies? Um, now, this is where people go off. You start with zero. If you start with zero, you're not going zero to a dollar. Because if you think about it, that would be 101 different responses. Because people could say zero, then they could say one cent, two cents, three cents. Think of it this way. If I count all the numbers from 0 to 10, it's not 10 numbers. Write it out. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 0 counts as one of the responses. So if I want to do an interval of 10 down here, I've got to go 0 to 9, not 0 to 10. So. That being said, if I want to go an interval of a dollar, back to our problem here, I don't want to go zero to one. I want to go zero to 99 cents. And then I can go one to a dollar 99. Okay, now I have a place. If, any, if a kid says, I get a dollar and 78 cents for the tooth fairy, I'm going to count them in this interval right here. Two to 299, and then I got one at 350, so I have to go three to 399. And then I'm going to count up how many of these different responses fit in these ranges. Okay, so first of all, in the 0 to 99 cent range, 
This one's in there. That's between 0 and 99 cents. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 4 kids answered in that 0 to 99 cent range. Notice, I didn't cross these out. That's in the 1 to $1.99 cent range. So 1, 2, 3. A buck 50 is in there. All right, 2 to 2.99, 1, 2. And 3 to 3.99, 1, 2, 3. Now, uh, this is going to be different. So, well, let's go ahead and let's put uh, for my intervals. I could write intervals or I could put here um, amount of money. Now, we need to show that this is an interval and not specific responses. So what's different about a histogram? Uh, a histogram is a bar graph where the bars touch. Let me write that down. Bars touch, because that's going to show that a kid could answer in any range right here, and there's no break in the data. So I'm going to go ahead and put... Um, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to divide this up. This will be from 0 to 99, a dollar to a dollar 99, 2 to 2.99. Uh, uh, let's check here. 0 to 1. Okay, there we go. Okay? Try and get them the same width. Now, there's a couple different ways you'll see this. The book will, uh, they'll do 0, they'll write the actual interval down here, and that's fine. That's fine. I tend to think, in my mind, that looks a little messy. But if you do that, that's certainly okay. So what I do is I just write right here, what's the point at which it switches? It switches at a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, and four dollars. That's where we switch to a new interval. So, and then my frequency is over here. One, two, three, four. So that's how many uh, responses we got in those intervals. All right, so let's go ahead and let's draw the bars in here. Here's how this works. We're starting at zero. That's this line right here. From zero to 99, we're at four. So my first bar, one moment, green the board is acting up again. My first bar, goes all the way up to four. Notice it's starting at one, at that switching point, okay? Now, my next bar starts at three. So from a dollar to a dollar 99, I had three people in that range. So I'm just, wherever I left off with my bar, I'm gonna pick up with that next one. All right, for the next one, from two to 2.99, I had people say uh, two. And this bar is gonna come up. So notice it's the, exact, it's the exact same thing as a bar graph, except now the bars are touching. Now when we get to 3 to 3.99, I gotta get my bar back up to 3. So I'm just gonna extend this up a little bit. There we go. And then this is where it's really important to kind of fill in your bars with different directions, because that might look, might look like one big blob. Get off me there. All right, there we go. I'll come back the other way with this one. That's a pretty nice histogram there. Now, I forgot one thing on the bar graph and on the histogram. We need a title. So on this, we could call this uh, amounts of money given by the tooth fairy. On the bar graph, we would call this Hours a TV watched by sixth graders. Make sure you have a title. Obviously, that's something that's often forgotten. All right, so your, uh, your check-in, again, is like the, the check-in we did for the stem and leaf plots. It's in a folder beneath this video. Go ahead and uh, do that now on a separate sheet of paper. We're going to turn that paper in tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're going to practice making bar graphs and histogram histograms for the next time we're in class, I should say.